Uh, so in the previous video, I repaired that ABS module, and this is just a, a this is still the same day. I mean, I'm not going to be stupid here, but you know, uh, there's there's another issue. So we had a wheel bearing code in the previous video. Um, besides the ABS module uh, short to ground. So unfortunately, uh, there was a change of plans. He needed tie rods, and I'm like, well, let's do the tie rods just in case that's interfering with the wheel bearing and causing uh, ABS traction codes. So I, I know it sounds far-fetched, but if you got wheels that are moving left to right because of a bad tie rod, I, ideally, you'll want to take care of that tie rod first. Um, and make sure that that's not interfering with um, uh, signaling. But uh, what's going on with this one? So the code came back after I took it on test drive, the, not for the module, but for the front right uh, wheel speed sensor. I'm going to go through some basic, basic tests. I'm not going to pull an oscill oscilloscope out today, but uh, I think this, this can be managed without it uh, because... I, I just actually I think it can let's just do it without the oscilloscope today so we won't be all fancy and high-tech and shit so we're gonna keep it PG-13 all right so the wheel the cars off the wheels off what's going on is again the front right speed sensor is not working properly now you do this at your own risk there's my disclaimer out there you get you have loose clothing you die that's your fault but this is what I'm doing obviously and um you know, you're just a part of my day today. This is what's happening. So, I'm having some interference with the front right wheel signal. So, that's falling off. I'm going to turn the wheel to all the way to the left. And so we can get a better look at this connector here. This is the ABS wheel speed sensor connector. We're going to do a quick resistance test from the connection going connector going to the uh, ABS module which is this one this is the male end the female is going to the ABS uh, the wheel speed sensor all right like I'll tell you this car has got a lot of problems it's not just this it has a coolant leak too from the bypass tube seals Ugh. anyway so we're gonna hook up on here on the male end and being that this is the end that doesn't have a lot of movement, we're going to wiggle some wires and, and look and see if there's any change or fluctuation in the resistance and causing an open circuit. It's very simple. I know there's no uh, numbers from, for specifications, but what I'm looking for is just the potential open circuit because there is some type of uh, loop system from here to the module. So we have some, some type of uh, foundation to work with. And uh, like I said, uh, that if there was a open circuit, we would get an open open uh, circuit signal or OL in the uh, on the fluke here. So let's let's link up. I'm gonna take two safety pins, put them in there, and do a wiggle test. Simply take my safety pins, insert those in the mill. And the connector here. I have a couple alligator clips. Put those there. And I do have them tied in to my leads. So we do and should have some type of resistance value. Put on this little horseshoe thingy. So a before connection, we have an open circuit, and here we have a closed circuit. This is a value that we have to start with. And like I said, I'm gonna um, just do a wiggle test. If there was an open circuit, we would got we would get that OL. So I'm just going following this wire around where I think it may be. Uh, subjected to a lot of stress or a lot of wiggling that will cause the wire to open. Even though that's moving a little bit, that is not enough to cause an open circuit. So we have a 41k ohms. All right, I'm gonna go back to the go up 
here by the subframe. There's no change. All right, everything seems seeming to be consistent. The key is off, by the way. I'm removing my pins. That's why we saw it go into an open status. All right, so next, I'm going to go right here to the female end, the accepting end, and put my alligator clips right inside of there. Now, here's the uh, dangerous part. You got to start the car up, let the wheel rotate, and monitor the voltage. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it on AC since it produces an AC signal. We've got direct current here. AC, the little squiggly line is going to be alternating current. And uh, we have some type of voltage. We should should have like, nope, yeah, we're not going to have any connectivity or anything because it, it generates its own signal. And if I move this back and forth, I can see it want to produce a voltage. So I'm going to move my... Mag my magnetic light here. I'm gonna start up, put it in drive, and watch it rotate. And I'm gonna get a number, and then I'm gonna still do my wiggle test. I'm gonna make sure I have no loose clothing so I don't die. All right. All right. The wheel is rotating. It is producing one volt. It was supposed to do some more net. 1.9. I'm sorry, 1 point, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, we got 1.3, it's going to open, it's going to open here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move my connector and see if this is contributing to my problem here. If I can get it to stay consistent like it is right now, I know I'm onto something. So I'm just going to move the connector here. I can get it to stay open. This is dangerous. <laughs> so we got, we do have drop-offs. We do have an open. It is staying open, and if I can get it to stay there, if I can get it to hold. Oh, oh, damn it. Look at that. Oh, gosh. I think I'm on to something. So, my wires came out. There's my problem right there. So I did have an open circuit, but it was inside of the connector here. I'm gonna try to get, not let these collapse. Um, connect together, sorry I said collapse. <laughs> so I did have a fault with my connector, even though my pins and my alligator clips are still connected inside of there. All right, so I can talk now. So this this was our problem here um, it, we saw there was some instances where it was rotating and it was it was going to an open circuit uh, strangely that this connector just pretty much gave out I could take these pins here and just redo them to ensure that we have a good connection and likely that's what I'll probably do and test drive it This is, um, I know it's the best thing to do is to replace the wheel bearing, but this is family member, and uh, I don't mind going through the extent of saving a few dollars so we can get them back running and uh, on, some, uh, on a good standing here so we'll, we can save a few dollars here. The wheel bearing was 140 something dollars, so. It shouldn't matter uh, which direction it goes because it produces a AC signal. So I'm not going to worry too much about it. So I'll, uh, if I have enough room, pull these pins out, redo them, get them connected, and reinsert them, and uh, we should be good to go. All right. So this is what I'm doing. I already got one out already. I just took a. Um, Just took a pair of needle nose, pulled the insert out. So I'm gonna make sure I put those in first. 
on the wire for a slide the exposing of the wire behind here to crimp it so that's what has to happen more than likely I'll just take my uh, solder and uh, if I have any more butane left so basically if this was the wire it'll go in here the wire go in there and things happen like I'll crimp it or either get it soldered and um, we'll be good to go I should be able to open this in here hmm I got a few options I think what I might do is take some wire here and just repair it with fresh wire solder it and then when I leave this exposed in here just like put everything in and then use those exposed wires to to uh, repair what was damaged so we'll have a little bit extra length let's do that so we got I'm just gonna force this out I'm, I know I should do something a little bit safer but I don't think we should have to worry about anything that fell out hmm Second one here, and we'll be good to go. So I'm going to get that ram back in there. Alright, so they're both in there and I'm just going to simply cut the wire. Cool. Here's my fix here. Uh, it's just a patch. I got on the phone and um, <laughs> forgot to put the insulation around there, so it was my my dumb doing. So I'm gonna do the same test. Put my alligator clips inside of here. Do a wiggle test, and then we'll look at the resistance value and see if there's any changes. If not, uh, I'm gonna say this is a really good fix for a simple issue. So I'm getting the alligator clips together now. Stick them right back inside of there. If I can get a hold of one. Alright. Like I said, I'm just going to do a simple... Um, Damn, that's right. I'm not on the same one, so I can't do resistance, duh. So, why is it showing a resistance value? Why is it showing a resistance value? Is that like a... That's weird. Oh, well, 
that's strange. It, it wasn't showing a resistance value before. Um, you know, I what I could do is disconnect the other one. It's probably connected to a lobe. It's probably making yeah. I think it's just making contact with a um, with the with the high point there. Enough said. All right, so we're back running now. We're making a consistent 1.3 volts. Before it wasn't even doing it, it was 1.2. So I'm gonna move the connector. I'm doing it right now as we speak. I'm just moving the connector around, looking for any type of drop-offs. And so far, it's staying right at 1.4 volts. It's a lot better than what it was before. Uh, so the RPM was a little higher, so this is a cold start. So it's staying consistent. There's no fluctuation as before from 1.1 to 1.3 volts so I think we're good I'm gonna take it on a test drive get everything buttoned up and I think uh, I think we'll be good to go this car is done just got a mile or two driven on it and I know that's probably not enough to confirm this fix or not but I'm gonna say it's fixed honestly because I mean well, the problem was obvious so there's no fault codes in this uh, module here now it was very obvious when we hooked the uh, hooked up the fluke it was capable of getting the ro seeing a rotational speed and um, it was approximately 10 miles an hour from what the scan tool uh, advised uh, producing about 1.3 volts um, after the so after the fix there was no fall-offs and I don't know if you noticed but comparison to the when coming to the conclusion that the, the connector was a problem you could see that the there was a fall off with the signal it was in that transitioning phase the multimeter was is not that responsive so it was in that tra transitioning phase of detecting a problem but unfortunately being that that uh, the fluke isn't as responsive as a oscilloscope we don't have any like dudley noted information so we can't see things transpire right in front of our eyes we have to wait for this multimeter to respond and it's not that fast so we were still capable of seeing the the blank screen going to an open circuit in some instances, but there were times where it just was the the connection was in and out. So that gave us more uh, information as far as like, hey, we're we're somewhere in the right track here. It wasn't a connection problem for my leads or whatever because they had alligator clamps on there. You know, they weren't clamp, clamped together because the resistance was very high. Um, I mean, if it was, the resistance would be low nearly grounded out that's what wasn't the problem you know we saw we saw a fluctuation of voltage so other than that um the wheel bearing has been replaced before uh probably was just the aftermarket cheap part connector is in a fixed position strangely that connector it worn out i'm not sure what happened maybe when they replaced the brakes at one point in time they pulled on it a little bit i don't know maybe it was age maybe it was quality of part don't know but it was a connector and um, we were capable of seeing that with a simple fluke multimeter. So we didn't have to change the whole wheel bearing, which was great. This was family, so you know the patchwork wouldn't wouldn't be a bad idea. You know, it's saving money, it's fixed. You don't have to worry about it. That's one less thing to, to worry about. So we'll see if it holds up. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that we'll be fine with that. So there was two things that we did. We repaired one of the check engine lights for the module, the ABS module. It seemed to have been a connection problem. And then this came up out of nowhere and uh, wound up being a connector issue. So two simple fixes. Didn't cost a dime, but some time. So, hey, it worked out. Uh, but uh, we'll see if it holds up. But, hey, if you're not subscribed, hit that link. Subscribe to the channel. Stay informed on how to reassurance my work. And uh, see you on the next one.